I've seen the YouTube videos and I'd even managed to load a rip of the ROM via an emulator. However, none could really prepare me for holding a physical copy of the worst game ever made in my hands. A new copy will run you around 300 bucks on eBay. I was able to buy a used copy for less than 10 bucks plus shipping. The cartridge came out around the same time I was born. It's weird to hold something as old as I was in the palm of my hands. The label was scuffed and a few sections had been peeled off over the years. It was clear that someone had tossed it in a box and left it there for quite some time. I had bought a few different Atari 2600s on eBay over the past few years, but they were quite literally so old that most of them wouldn't start. In this particular case, I pushed the cartridge into the console and got this weird error screen where the television flashed green and black while making this loud screeching noise. I unhooked the Atari and pushed the cartridge into my Retron console. A blue screen with orange letters spelling out ET came to life on my television, along with this puke green rendering of ET that looked like the mongoloid offspring of Yoda mixed with Oognot. A few button presses later, I found myself navigating dark green obstacles on a light green backdrop. It wasn't long before I remembered that some of the dark green obstacles were holes, and I moved around aimlessly collecting items and running from sprites that would make Mario look like the Mona Lisa in comparison. This continued for a few hours before I got bored and stepped away from the television to smoke a bowl out of my front porch. I was about halfway through my evening toke when I noticed some flashing coming from the living room out of the corner of my eye. I had left the television on when I walked out of the room, so I was more than a little surprised to see that not only had the TV switched back on, but the game seemed to be playing itself. For a moment, I thought that maybe the console had reset itself, and the game was showing in demo mode, but no amount of button mashing had any effect. I figured in the moment that I had a bug copy of the game, and went to turn off the Retron only to find that the power cord had come loose. By this point, I was sufficiently inclined to nope the hell out, grab the cartridge out of the console, and yeeted that son of a bitch across the room. Shaken by the ordeal, but still feeling that retro gaming vibe, I slid in a copy of Chrono Trigger and spent the rest of the night running around on the wings of time and wrecking enemies as Frog. I slept on the couch that night and woke up to the same glitchy screech from the Atari 2600 when I tried to load the cartridge. I looked over to see that the ET cartridge had returned to the Retron and that the game was continuing to play. I laid there on the couch as the game seemingly played itself. It wasn't long before I realized I was watching a loop. A player sprite would move about collecting phone cards and stop in what seemed like random locations, allowing scientists to capture it. But then it would just stand in one piece as the green icon in the upper right corner got smaller and then it would move up and suddenly beat the game. I watched this three times before I realized that the game was beating itself over and over again with a precision that would make even the most ardent of speedrunners jealous. The novelty of this otherworldly speedrun was lost on me as I snapped back to reality that a game console with less computing power than my old calculator was solving one of the worst games in history. Like it was on easy mode. It was at that point that I pulled the cartridge from the console and walked it into the kitchen. I pulled a hammer from the drawer where I had shoved literally every other tool or odd utensil in the house and proceeded to smash the cartridge. After about the second whack to the cartridge, it split open and I saw the brown blood stain on the inner circuit board. I went to whack the circuit board and the cartridge moved off the counter onto the floor. I went to pick it up and it slid across the kitchen floor and into the living room. By the time I had walked back in there, with the hammer, the shattered remains of the cartridge had moved back into the Retron and the game continued to play itself over and over. I had dropped about 70 bucks on that console, but I wasn't about to sit here and let whatever demonic retro gamer had hijacked my living room get away with that kind of stuff. So I grabbed the whole console and I walked it over to the front door where I promptly threw it into the yard. I went to lay back down on the couch hoping that I'd wake up to find it all but a bad dream. And just as I was starting to doze off, I hear a faint smack against the front door. Shortly after that, I heard it again. I crept over to the front door and watched as the E.T. cartridge, still dangling from the remains of the Retron, moved of its own volition a few inches back and then smacked into the door, almost as if it had noticed that I was watching. It shot up and smacked against the window. Nope. 
Rather than having to explain to my landlord that a possessed Atari cartridge had decided to break into my house, I did the only rational thing I could think of in the moment. I walked outside, picked up the remains of the cartridge, and held my cigarette lighter to the circuit board as the plastic and silicone blackened, and flaming bits of devil cartridge dripped from what I was holding. Satisfied that I had returned whatever bastard had been messing with my buzz back to the pits of hell, I took what remained of the circuit board and buried it under a large rock in my yard. If it was still capable of moving, it wasn't showing any signs of it. I went back to sleep, and I stayed zonked out on the couch until noon. Sadly, it wasn't a dream. I walked into the kitchen as I stood next to the trash can with my afternoon coffee. I looked down to see what looked like a piece of yellow paper inside the box that the ET card had shipped in. It was a handwritten note from the seller that read, My son played this game every day until he died back in 87. I hope it brings you as much joy as it brought him. Nah, oh, fuck. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Gino Baga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trey Smiles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Huss, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Kraus, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Did he kind of see her? Melissa Swagart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams.